You ready? This is Miss Daisy. She is 15 years old and she's a black lab. Daisy was surrendered to our rescue when her owner um, went into hospice care and could no longer take care of her. Some of my favorite things about Daisy is how stubborn she is. And she asks for what she wants and she asks for it until she gets it. Daisy was suffering um, from some sort of degenerative, you can still see she stands funny, so some sort of pain. She wasn't really using her back legs, dragging one of her legs, barely got up. She also seemed to have a little bit of dementia. And the biggest thing she was suffering from was a large MCT tumor on her, that was attached to her spine on her back end. And we started feeding her a, a raw and freeze-dried diet. Um, a cool protein, we feed her turkey or rabbit, and that was a big help in her recovery. We used uh, our heel tincture, and I would do a full dropper, which is 37 milligrams in the morning, and, and a full dropper in the evening, um, in the beginning. And I also used the Remedy Sab from CBD Dog Health directly on the tumor. So. I think the most important thing for people to remember is that when you start using an all-natural medicine, you're going to watch a tumor die in front of your face, and it is not pretty. The following contains graphic imagery not suitable for some pet parrots. So we had about a month of it um, getting bigger and uglier to completely start dying in front of our face. Um, We'd wake up in the morning and she felt great, wasn't bothering her, she'd jump up, but her bed would have bloody goo ooze all over it. It was really gross and angry, um, but within 30 days, it was drying up, going away, and four months later, it is completely gone. What's Daisy's life like now? Oh, she is living the good life, uh, her best life. Her mobility changed so much that she, um, started running around. I would find her swimming in the lake. She uh, runs with the pack and loves to go out in the yard with us and explore. She always has to be with one of us. Huge appetite. I swear she can hear again. So it's an overall, I've seen so much improvement. She's a very happy dog. Her nose works. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for being here, Linda. I really appreciate all your help um, in setting up for this and greeting our guests. Hello, thank you for coming today. We are talking about CBD for senior pets. Now, Linda here is not quite a senior dog, but um, she's kind of getting into her, her middle years. Um, but, you know, the things that we're going to talk about today are not only preventative scenarios that will help if you do have a dog who's about Linda's age, around five or six, that you can then be armed with as your dogs and cats and horses or whatever pets you have start to get older into their senior years. Um, you know, we're going to be able to then kind of prevent some of these things that are just expected for our senior pets to go through instead of acting in a sort of reactive way once they're already experiencing all these things like arthritis, um, autoimmune conditions, different cancers. Hello from Vermont. Hi, everybody. Please comment where you're from, what you're doing. Um, I'm so glad you're all here. We've got so much to talk about. This is really uh, kind of one of the best ways that we can help our pets. Our senior pets, they're the ones who have such dramatic results. Um, that we can see. And that video that I was just showing at the beginning, that is from our rescue um, that is run, operated, and owned by Angela Arlino, our founder. And she was the one talking in that video about that rescue, Daisy, who is kind of a perfect scenario for CBD. This is a dog that had um, some joint pain and degenerative issues in her lower lumbar region. She had cognitive issues. Um, that were making her confused and, and kind of that early onset CCD. And then she also had that MCT tumor on her back. So kind of three different conditions 
um, that while they seem unrelated, just speak to a greater um, kind of underlying dysregulation in her body. And the way that her quality of life was able to be transformed because of pretty simple changes that we, you know, that we advocate for, not only the inclusion of a full spectrum hemp extract or heal, um, uh, but also the things that I know so many of you know about. Um, hi, Debbie. Um, things like including more fresh whole foods, species appropriate diets for our pets, um, you know, kind of trying to limit as much as we can of these different things that are going to suppress their immune system instead of supporting it. Um, there are so many things that we can do. And, you know, we love using hemp extract. We love using medicinal mushrooms and all these other holistic modalities. But really, um, it should and always has to be from a, um, a preventative approach coming from these health conditions at a lot of different angles and one that is adaptable and that changes depending on your pet's needs. Uh, so we're going to jump right into this and, and talk about some of the ways that we can help our senior pets. Um, we're going to start here. Um, I want to talk about kind of some of the basics about CBD and what it does for our pets, uh, just as a reminder here. So the first thing that we need to remember is this system called the endocannabinoid system. This is an amazing system that exists within our body, with our pets' bodies, and its main function is to balance the operations of all the body's other systems. So that includes the immune system, um, the, the, the hypo, uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, that's for um, different like uh, hormonal kind of imbalances that things that can affect such as um, Cushing's disease. The endocannabinoid system and, and CBD have also been shown to regulate pain, seizure activity, appetite, digestion, as I said, the immune system, surveillance of tumors, which is so important for our older dogs, um, as well as modulating sleep rest cycles and bone physiology. You know, these are these are this is not an exhaustive list of all the things that the endocannabinoid system balances um but you know is kind of can give you a clue as to why you know when we talk about all the things that cbd can be really great for this kind of shows you why why we can say it does so many different things it's not a cure-all there's no such thing as any silver bullet but what's really amazing about cbd and the other phytocannabinoids and natural um, natural phenomena and, and constituents of a cannabis plant, which is where CBD comes from. It's basically the essential oil of the flower of the cannabis plant. Um, it has all these different regulatory properties that help our pets' bodies just kind of function in the way that they're designed to. Instead of having any one kind of effect in a unidirectional way, in a really aggressive way, the way that some pharmaceutical medications do. So, you know, these are so many of the different ways that it can help some of the properties of CBD specifically that really affect our pets. Analgesic. This is a big one for our senior pets and one that we're going to focus on a lot today, that, um, that pain killing property. Antineoplastic, meaning it's cancer fighting and prohibiting. It's anti-inflammatory, calming, anti-convulsant cardioprotective for our pets with cardiovascular issues, neuroprotective, which is, you know, especially important and implicated in brain, in the brain and, and issues of CCD and the such, um, stimulating bone healing, reducing blood pressure, decreasing insulin resistance. These are all studied properties of CBD. And of course, you know, we have all of our sources here. This is not just my opinion. This is research that has been proven over and over again. People constantly are saying to us, you know, well, I'd really love to start CBD, but my vet says it, there's no research. And um, I, uh, I would highly contest that. And I think that, you know, that we have so many vets now who are online with this, who really understand how to use this natural medicine and also have done the work to educate themselves and really learn how this stuff functions, what the safety profile is, which is very safe, um, and you know how to integrate it into their practice. So if your vet is not willing to talk about this stuff, there are plenty out there who will. 
Um, there are great organizations. You can reach out to us afterwards, uh, and we're happy to direct you to some of the vets that we know who are on our board of advisors and well as in our kind of uh, community and our sphere who are very willing to talk about this stuff and understand how it works in conjunction with the other therapies that they would probably be offering you. So don't give up. Even if you don't have a vet in your area who can talk to you about this stuff, there are a lot of people out there who can help, including us. We've got a lot of resources for you. Um, Julia, hi, CB Dog Health. Which one would you recommend for cancer? Um, I am absolutely going to get to that, and I will tell you it's the heel tincture, and I'll tell you why as we go on. Um, that uh, that is a, a really big one. So, just to kind of talk about, you know, what uh, what the main ways we can help our senior pets for. Let's break it down here. So, this, like I said, is in no means an exhaustive list. I just want to give you kind of the main neighborhoods that we're going to work with in our senior pets. So pain and inflammation, you know, this is one, especially for our older dogs, where so many of our symptoms and all of the, the changes that we see in them as they become senior pets, this is kind of the root of it. Um, we talk so much about uh, chronic inflammation and how over time, that can lead to these different diseases. You know, low grade chronic inflammation is at the root of so many different problems that you may not notice in the early life of your pet, but as they get older, as these things kind of pile up, as their endocannabinoid system, which I mentioned in the beginning, as that becomes more dysregulated and imbalanced because of a whole host of different things, this chronic inflammation often is the root and what leads to things like arthritis cancer, these different imbalances in the pituitary adrenal axis that cause things like Cushing's disease. Um, so, you know, by being able to modulate and control chronic inflammation, as well as to just give them relief from pain, you can do so much for their ability overall to heal, to rest, to actually kind of come back into themselves. Um, I'm seeing all your questions here. And I'm so grateful for you writing in. Um, Lisa, you say, my 14-year-old Shih Tzu was diagnosed with a heart condition. What would be the best for her inflammation and cough? Um, for that, I would recommend our Ease Tincture. Uh, this is a really good one for our, our dogs that are just kind of coming into those, um, those symptoms. You're, you're starting to see that early onset. And for um, dogs with heart conditions, you know, you want to start at a lower dose. Um, it's really great for the cardiovascular system. It is going to be regulatory of heart rhythm to reduce blood pressure, but we don't wanna give them a huge dose all at once so that there's any kind of fast change. Um, that's why we really, for dogs with heart conditions, recommend a low and slow method. Again, I am not a veterinarian. Um, this is what we have learned through research. This is what our veterinary advisors have kind of helped us to formulate these products. Um, Ease is great for these kinds of conditions because of the way that it can help with um, reducing inflammation, um, modulating the immune system so that uh, those, those issues in the cardiovascular system, in the trachea, um, are you know, lessened by, by reducing inflammation, by um, helping to open the, the brachial system. Actually, the, the dog that was um, kind of who is the inspiration for our yeast tincture is a great um, kind of case study for um, for this issue for um, collapsing trachea and that that sort of cough. Uh, so let's talk about Odie a little bit. Odie is um, again one of our our founder Angela's soul dogs, and um, actually this tincture ease you'll see his picture down there right on the bottle there. So. Odie um, was the reason for this product being developed. And, you know, now he's 13 years old. He's a mini schnauzer. He started experiencing this kind of joint pain and stiffness, as well as those symptoms that you're talking about, Lisa, of, you know, coughing, um, that, that inflammation throughout the um, cardiovascular system that kind of leads to that um, collapsing trachea and, and, and those problems oftentimes. Um, and so, you know, Angela was looking for a way that she could help Odie 
get some relief, not only from his joint pain, but that dysre dysregulation um, throughout his body. And um, this has been a huge help for him. Ease also has turmeric and frankincense in it, which are other adaptogenic herbs that are really known for their ability to reduce inflammation throughout the body, to fight cancer. There are so many different amazing properties. And when you work with those in conjunction with a full spectrum hemp extract, they are even more powerful. They have this additive effect when you combine these different medicinal herbs together. And so, you know, Odi was one that immediately we were able to see incredible benefits. Um, I mean, it, it started with him not being able to run up the stairs. They, you know, their, their bedroom's upstairs. He couldn't get up the stairs to, to get to bed. He wouldn't, he wouldn't jump up onto the couch anymore. You know, these are symptoms that I'm sure all of you are pretty familiar with. He, uh, you know, he's, um, he's a little bit more lethargic, a little bit um, less willing to go out and, and run around and play with the other dogs. And so the way that CBD is working in this instance is in a couple ways. Like I said, um, it's going to be modulating inflammation. Um, and the way that it does this is by communicating with our immune system, with our pet's immune system, and blocking a lot of these enzymes that break down our natural endocannabinoids, and also decreasing the release of chemical messengers that cause swelling and inflammation. So, you know, these histamines and cytokines, you guys know these words, these are, these are the things that kind of our body uses to signal, hey, we've got a problem, we need to rush resources uh, to that area so that we can start fighting that inflammation. Um, and so the way that CBD works and the other cannabinoids and um, plant molecules that you're going to find in a full spectrum hemp extract like ease is you're going to find um, that they communicate with the immune system to moderate that response. So it's not saying stop all inflammation, you know, which some inflammation is good. Our body, our pet's bodies need that kind of impetus for certain things. You know, that's, that's the reason that that they're there. They're there to take out cells that are not functioning properly, that could become cancerous. They're there, um, you know, sometimes that inflammation, if there's, if it's the site of a wound, we need those cells to, to bring blood and resources to that area. But in cases, for instance, like arthritis, um, joint pain, um, just kind of small, small allergy cases, um, these cases are where CBD and targeting the endocannabinoid system can be really beneficial to have our pet's bodies have a proportionate response to these. So controlling inflammation is huge for our senior pets. Just by, just by controlling their inflammation, the way that that affects how they feel pain, you know, it's like, it's like when we take ibuprofen or something, that is, that is the same kind of impetus, except without all those side effects the, of, of the, the, the gut, um, on the gut, on the kidneys, on the liver. Um, it's controlling that inflammation, which then is giving us pain relief. So that's one way that it can be really helpful. Um, hey, Julia Johnson, love to hear that you're using Heal on your girl for her tumor. Um, hey, Maggie, your senior dog has pyometria operation. She is bitchy. Yeah, not let her groom, snaps and growls. Absolutely a great candidate for CBD. Um, I feel bad for your groomers, but <laughs> I'm sure that they're up to the challenge. Our groomers are some of our um, bravest warriors in the pet world. <laughs> so shout out to all my groomers out there. Um, so I want to talk again uh, about, you know, how else it's going to be able to manage um, pain and inflammation. So like I said, rather inflammation, managing that inflammation, not only is going to prevent further degeneration in all these conditions that our pets get, our senior pets get, um, it is going to give that analgesic effect. In addition, not only does CBD um, fight um, pain and, and um, inflammation or stop pain from happening in that way, it also just changes the way that our pets perceive pain. Here are two really amazing studies that were done that showed not only are our pets receiving relief just by reducing inflammation, but it's actually changing the way 
that their brains recognize these the, the, the signals that indicate, okay, now you're in pain. So this is, this is really incredible. So, and what it tells us is that it's coming at pain from a number of different ways. Um, so it's actually just blocking that signal and, and, and stopping the brain from ever feeling the pain. Um, it, it's, it's really incredible. And so that in combination with the way, um, research is showing that CBD and the other cannabinoids in a full spectrum hemp extract, um, are able to reduce inflammation. Like this study that was done at Cornell in 2019 showed a huge decrease in pain with no side effects reported by the owners. Um, this other study that was done by University of Baylor, um, where they saw a significant decrease in pain. This again is a double blind placebo controlled study. So you know that these results are unbiased, which is, you know, that's really important. Um, by these two ways, reducing inflammation, inflammatory based pain, and as well as neurological pain, we have so much that we can do for our pets. It really can be a huge change for them. And one thing that I want to, yes, we are live right now. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> um, one thing that I also want to remind you of that, you know, we talk about a lot is that, um, what's so great about, especially our dogs and how it interacts, um, with their system is that they have way more receptors than humans do for, uh, cannabinoids like CBD. Uh, so, the, the benefits that they are able to have from it are even greater than us. That's why these analgesic effects, these anti-inflammatory effects are even more potent for them than they are for us. Um, so that's, uh, it's really important. And it's also, um, worth saying, you know, that part of why it's so important that we have a full spectrum extract is that a lot of these cannabinoids that are associated with pain relief are ones that you wouldn't be getting if you were buying a broad spectrum extract or a CBD isolate. We need that wide breadth of different cannabinoids that are found in the full extract of this cannabis flower. So all those bioactive molecules that function synergistically together, as soon as we start refining it and taking it out and trying to make it into a pharmaceutical medicine, the way that we're kind of used to in our Western sensibility, we're kind of refining it down to its isolated form. Um, we lose the benefits. Um, THC, for instance, people are really scared of THC um, because of the dramatic effects that it can have. However, it's incredibly safe, according to a ton of research, which I'm happy to show you, as well um, as it being one of the most potent analgesic agents among cannabinoids. Um, hi, Lauren. Lauren. Uh, Thank you. I, I love sharing this information. She says my eight year old golden had gotten down to 69 numbers. They were talking to me about immune disorders. I started feeding him real food and your heal formula. I'm seeing a significant difference. He's playful, has a great appetite. He does run from me when I walk to him with the dropper. Uh-huh. Doesn't like the taste. Can I put it on his food? Also bought remedy. I'm so glad that you're, that your pup is doing better. Um, that's fantastic. That really is kind of one of the ways that we see um, s s the first changes is people talk about our dogs feeling puppy like again. Uh, and that it, it's real. You know, they if you think about kind of some of the times when you have had that um, that kind of relief from pain, you know, after a massage or um, you're in a hot tub and you get out, you know, when your body's just feeling relaxed, you feel better. You're you're able to think more clearly. You're you're not as reactive. You're not held up our dogs feel the same thing when they get relief from their pain. So they're able to run around. They're able to be happy. They're able to sleep and rest um, like they probably couldn't before. Um, as far as um, helping you get it into his mouth, um, you can absolutely put it on the food. It is going to be less bioavailable. This is something that I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit later. We really do recommend putting it right on their gums. Um, but uh, you, you can put it on the food. I would just say you're going to have to watch your dosage. It's going to have to probably adjust a little bit just based on how the body absorbs it straight through the gut. 
it's not as fast and you're going to lose some of the potency by putting it on the food. Um, so yeah, but, but you can do that if it's, uh, if it's traumatizing for your dog, Susan, hi, Susan, um, uh, has mitral valvular endocrinitis is a cough and gagging with the sneeze first. Um, I want him to be comfortable without a cough. I don't want to use conventional meds, but he's on vet med and benazapril. Uh, would CBD be able to get him off those meds? Um, again, I'm not a veterinarian, so I can't kind of advise you on how, uh, how you would come off of those medications. But based on what we have seen at our rescue and with thousands of animals that we've worked with across the country, I think that CBD, as well as using things like medicinal mushrooms um, and then food therapy, there is absolutely a way for you to move to a natural way of dealing with this disorder. Um, you know, there for for our, our pets suffering from this kind of like inflammation through um, the the lungs and the the trachea and and that kind of area it is a it helps to dilate um that kind of um it, it dilates the um the the bronchi um it it helps regulate heart rhythm it there it is anti-inflammatory for that area so there's less pressure pushing down and causing that kind of constriction that leads to the coughing as well as it being um you know so much of of what causes that coughing is actually psychological and is, is about a stress response. As soon as they feel constricted, they become more constricted because they're um, because they become stressed out. And so by having that anti anxiolytic effect, along with the localized anti inflammatory properties, you really can um, kind of stop this. I remember Angela, um, Angela, who's the founder and, and uh, CEO of CBD Dog Health, her dog Odie, who I was just talking about, um, when we would record podcasts or interviews with different news organizations, Odie could never be in the room because he would be hacking and coughing. And, you know, over time, Angela has really kind of tailored his um, kind of protocol to completely get rid of his uh, the symptoms of his collapsing trachea. Um, so, you know, that includes mushrooms like our breathe tincture by Mycodog that has a bunch of medicinal mushrooms and adaptogenic herbs that also help CBD. Um, our ease tincture is fantastic for that again. So yes, there is definitely a way and I encourage you to just keep experimenting. Um, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I will get to your questions and, and keep talking to you, but I want to talk about some of the other ways that, uh, CBD can help our uh, our pets so a really another important way that we can use cbd and and benefit from medicinal cannabis with our senior pets is by boosting gut health and balancing immune function uh this is huge uh the the gut as we know is central to our pets immune function um they say that 70% of the cells that make up the immune system reside in the gut. And as you can see from this diagram here, the CB1 receptors, these are kind of the primary receptors that hook up with CBD and other cannabinoids. They're, these receptors are all through the lining of the stomach. They, they're all over in here. There's one and there's one. Here's some down here, these little green kind of caterpillar looking things. So these are all through the lining of the stomach and throughout the gut, throughout the intestines. And what they do, like all aspects of the endocannabinoid system is balance the function of that area. So if you just think logically, okay, there are all these receptors that exist in the gut and the primary function of the endocannabinoid system is to encourage balance and maintain homeostasis. Why are these receptors there in the gut? And what is their effect going to be? They're going to regulate the function of this area. And knowing how much of the immune system is in the gut, you can just kind of like infer and extrapolate by regulating the gut, we are regulating the immune system. And that then has so many greater knock on effects on, on a whole bunch of different disorders and issues that have to do um, with other aspects of our pet's health. 
but just kind of in a, in a literal way, um, in a very direct way, CBD can influence blood flow to the stomach lining, increasing that blood flow. It can um, modulate the release of gastric acid that can be really helpful for our dogs, um, you know, who, who are coughing up that kind of bile and, and acid to maintain a more kind of balanced pH level in the gut. It can absolutely moderate immune function for our allergy dogs or dogs that have inflammation on um, the skin or throughout the body. The gut is a great place to start with that. And of course, it can definitely help modulate appetite. Um, and so, you know, there there is so much research as well that that shows how it can how it can be helpful in not only GI inflammation, but gut pain, visceral pain. Um, and then, you know, just helping the body digest, use those resources and, you know, have a, a more um, kind of proportionate response to different inflammatory targets. So, you know, I think that in a lot of cases, um, we see kind of this change in our senior pets where as they get older, their sensitivities change. You may be feeding your dog the same thing their whole life and then suddenly they're not tolerating it or they don't, they don't want anything to do with it. They're starting to break out. They're getting inflamed. Their, their, their skin isn't looking as good and you have to start changing um, what they're eating or their routine. One of the ways that you can kind of build a more resilient um, kind of gut health and, and sort of just general health status is by supplementing their daily routine with something like a full spectrum hemp extract. Um, something that is going to naturally balance that function in a way that is not going to have a lot of side effects and that is going to be really gentle on their system while supporting a whole bunch of other different things. Um, hello, Maggie. Maggie says, oops, how can I be, how can I be about the being safe for pets? New to this, but I heard, no, the, this is hard. I don't know how to decipher that. <laughs> comment exactly. Um, but I think it's a question about safety. Um, what's great about cannabis-based medicine and CBD is that it is truly one of the safest modalities. That is not just a, something I'm saying, don't just take my word for it. There's so much research out there which shows that even at extremely high doses, way beyond what you would ever recommend for our pets, you can pretty much go sky's the limit and it is impossible to cause any cellular damage, any damage to their organs um, and to have any real long lasting consequences. I mean, you look at some of these uh, pieces of research that I've shown you here um, and they are some of these using really high doses, um, you know, where they're going up to 50 milligrams uh, 50 milligrams a day. I don't have any of the studies where they're doing like hundreds and hundreds of milligrams, which they did um, in order to just test the upper limits of how much these animals could take seeking in many cases to find a lethal dose. They were trying to see how much CBD it would take to kill these dogs, which is very inhumane. And I'm glad that they're not doing those kinds of experiments anymore. Um, but in no cases, there is no evidence, there is no history of any animal ever dying because of a cannabis overdose. And that cannot be said of any pharmaceutical drug to start with, or pretty much any other substance. You can, you can overdose and, and die from ingesting too much H2O. You cannot, you cannot kill an animal by having them consume too much CBD or THC for that matter. Um, so that's, you know, it is incredibly safe. That being said, there is absolutely a therapeutic window where you're going to get the greatest returns. And at a certain point, not only are you wasting product, but you can make your pet pretty uncomfortable. You know, you can have them be sedated and confused and disoriented and stoned. Um, and that's not the goal. You know, that's that's never the goal. And that doesn't mean that it's working better. There are certain cases, for instance, um, if you have a pet with a very painful condition and you want heavy analgesia, you really want to just give them some pain relief, you may need to give them a, a, an amount of CBD and full spectrum hep extract that is going to have them be a little bit sedated. <laughs> and, and that isn't the worst thing. You know, when some of the other medications that may be used to maintain and manage pain are, have so many negative effects on the liver, 
on the kidneys and are truly sedative, um, it's uh, it's a really fair trade off. And so you're really just kind of looking at um, the the cost benefit analysis, which is in in the kind of all ways that you can measure really tip in favor of using a full spectrum hemp extract. Um, Marcia says dosing throughout the day seems to be the best recommendation. Is that true? Absolutely, it is. Um, thanks for your question, Marcia. Um, you're just doing the work for me. You're giving me all the points that I need to bring up here. Um, dosing throughout the day is the best way to do it for sure. Uh, the research shows that for dogs, the half-life of CBD is between six and eight hours for near total um, uh, elimination. Um, so it's going to peak in blood concentration around two hours. So administer it. It's going to go up and up and up until about two hours. And that's when it's going to be at the highest concentration in their blood. And then over the next like six or seven hours, it's going to kind of go down. And this is, of course, depending on their metabolism, how old they are, how their body processes it. So if you can dose them a few, two times a day, great. Three times a day, even better. Um, that's going to just kind of keep it at that kind of higher level so that they don't dip back down and then... Um, yeah, so so definitely a uh, good idea to dose it in that way. Um, where was I at? Uh, we're talking about uh, gut health. It's great for the gut. Our senior pets need help with, with gut function more than anybody. Um, you know, the other thing, the kind of like final piece that I really wanted to address in this live and talk about is... Um, one that we think about with all of our senior pets and people, I'm thinking about my parents right now, you know, and um, one of the ways that cognitive function can be, or I just gave it away. <laughs> one of the ways that, that cannabis medicine can be so helpful is with cognitive function. <laughs> so uh, here we are. Thank you, everybody. It's, it's only Tuesday, but I guess my brain is quitting for the week. Um, yeah, this is, this is one of the areas where you can have so much benefit um, in the long run with our pets. Uh, and, and there are a number of ways for this. You know, I spoke at the beginning about um, the way that CBD and other cannabinoids can be neuroprotective, meaning it actually protects the connections between neurons in the brain and throughout the central nervous system. It also has been shown in research to be neuroregenerative. So, you know, very few um, compounds in the natural world and in um, that, that have been created in labs are able to actually regenerate uh, neurons and the connections between those cells. And cannabis is one of them. So this is incredibly uh, powerful. Um, we had we, we've had so many senior dogs that we've worked with um, who have benefited from this, but one in particular where we saw huge effects was with this lovely Chihuahua. Her name is Daisy. Um, and Daisy, here, where is she? So Daisy is an 18-year-old Chihuahua that came to our rescue, um, that, that Angela rescued at Fireflake Farm. And so she came to us because her owner could no longer take care of her. Her, her kind of health status became unmanageable for this older woman because she was having these debilitating grandma seizures. You know, all day she was falling into these seizures that were really intense and just stopped her from living her life. She was also, you know, very confused and disoriented. She wasn't sleeping well. And so, you know, she was really just a total mess. Um, and, you know, over time, we on the farm were able to tinker with her dose and and slowly over time raise her up to a pretty high dose this is one of the the dogs that had one of the higher doses that i've really heard of she was up towards almost 100 milligrams a day um and that however was exactly what she needed in order to stop those seizures from happening um, which was kind of the main goal but in addition to do that in, in addition to doing that and as a result of targeting those seizures, there were all these other effects that we saw in Daisy's life um, that, you know, we see as a commonality with all of our senior pets. Somebody, as you were talking about earlier, that kind of like puppy-like 
um, feeling that you see them experiencing again, where they have energy again, they're, they're looking around, they're connecting more. These are all things that we saw Daisy experiencing. She was no longer getting lost in corners. She, you know, was starting to make eye contact again. She would look up at us and be able to communicate a little bit more, be able to connect with her, not only the the humans in the house, but then the other dogs in the house, she was sleeping more. And so, you know, I know that you can all kind of from there, just sort of imagine just the change and the shift in this dog's life. You know, I, I will always kind of bring it back to how we feel when we're sleeping again, when we don't have pain, you just are able to relate to your, your pets and your people and the, everyone in your house better. You, by resting, the, the other functions of the body just work better. And so with Daisy, you know, we were going for the seizures, but this 18 year old dog then has relief from joint pain, is sleeping better. Her cognitive function got so much better. That was another thing that you heard Angela talking about in that first video that I played of the other Daisy. We have, Daisy is a very popular name, um, but Miss Daisy, who is the, the lab in the first video, that you know, she she started just wanting to go out more. She um, her her kind of her barking at the door constantly was diminished. She doesn't she wasn't as testy. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's really amazing to see a change so late in these dogs' lives. You know, when they're when they're up in their teens, and you think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people give up on on their pets at that time, and there's the, the kind of the the thing that I love to see is like it's not over, you know. It's it's there's always so much that you can do, and um, and it's never too late to start. You know, we we do the best that we can until we know better, and then when we know better, we do better. That's uh, one of the philosophies that that Angela and Hernando always kind of talk about. Um, hey Nelda, uh, you said my female Jack Russell contracted toxoplasmosis at approximately two years old. She's now 13, five months, and it seems her neurological status is getting bad. Will CBD help her? And if so, which formula is best? Um, I mean, I think that it is absolutely, there's a potential to have a lot of help that, like I said, those neurological conditions, it is shown to be neuroprotective and neuroregenerative. So stopping degradation, as well as repairing some of those things that have already been degraded. You know, let's, I, I think you need to temper your expectations as always. There is no just like quick fix, cure all. Um, but this is something that can help in a number of different ways and directly target those problems that you're having. So I would recommend our heel tincture, which is um, our most potent one. That's the one that we had Daisy on here, that green bottle. Um, that's got 37 milligrams of CBD per dropper full. So it's a pretty high dose. Um, Maria, you asked, is HEAL the best one for CCD, cogn canine cognitive dysfunction? Yes, absolutely. HEAL is great for that. Um, and, you know, earlier we were talking about ease as something that's really great for inflammation and for our dogs that have that kind of immune dysregulation. Um, ease is great for our dogs that are kind of coming into our, their senior years that are starting to feel those, those kind of aches and pains and dysregulation. For our dogs that are, you know, in fully in their senior years or are suffering from multiple kind of chronic conditions, we generally are always recommending our heel tincture. It's just more potent. It's got more CBD in it, about four times as much as our other blends, Calm and Ease. And so that's really designed for our senior dogs. Um, and part of the reason that we um, really focus on um, having our products um, formulated for different conditions is because it, it doesn't make sense um, to just dose our pets based on their weight, based on their size. Uh, we have to consider uh, their age, their metabolism, the specific conditions that they're suffering from, because different conditions require different doses of CBD. Um, and then different dogs are going to have different sensitivities of it. So I have this um, graphic that I'd love to show you. Uh, that kind of demonstrates that, you know, we, we always tell the story of a couple of, you know, just because you have a bigger dog doesn't mean it's going to be, uh, it's going to require 
a, uh, a higher dose of CBD. Um, for instance, if you have, say, a small dog uh, that's got a really high sense or really low sensitivity, so their their body just naturally needs more CBD, you may have to dose them way higher than a big dog who has really high sensitivity. Uh, some some big dogs just they don't need very much at all, and it works perfectly. So that's one way where just their natural sensitivity can can dictate how much they're going to need. The other thing is you may have a small dog with cancer, for instance, that's going to need a high dose of CBD versus a big dog that gets scared from thunder work, thunder storms or fireworks every once in a while that may need just nine milligrams or something like that. So in addition, what's really relevant for our senior dogs is that as our pets age, they tend to have more dysregulation in their endocannabinoid system. They tend to have more deficiencies, more places where that ECS, the endocannabinoid system that is meant to balance all the different roles and functions of different other systems in the body, it's kind of got, it's, it, it in itself has become dysregulated over time because of, you know, environmental factors, things, things that it's not it, mineral and vitamin deficiencies that kind of make it harder for the ECS to function. So generally we're finding that our older dogs are just needing higher doses to kind of reawaken that system and get it functioning again. Um, so there, there are a number of reasons why we really are recommending our senior dogs are on this higher dose, our heel tincture, um, not only because of their own sensitivity, but because of just, they've usually got more problems and they're just, uh, they just require higher doses. So this is our, our heel tincture uh, that, that I've been talking about. This really generally is the one that we highly recommend for our senior dogs. 37 milligrams of full spectrum hemp extract. It's got MCT oil, which is also known to be really great for the brain. Um, it's great for our dogs with seizures, cancer and tumors, CCD, Cushing's disease. As I mentioned before, it helps to regulate the release of hormones like cortisol. And we've seen so many dogs with Cushing's disease really suffer from this or, or benefit from this rather. And of course, just general kind of senior issues of pain and inflammation, aches. Um, there, there are a ton of different ways uh, that can be really beneficial. And then the other thing that I would uh, mention um, that, you know, this is a talk about CBD, but we, like, I think some of you know, we just launched our kind of sister company, Mycodogs line of uh, mushroom extract and adaptogen tinctures. Um, Clarity is one that you should absolutely check out for your senior dogs. So this has lion's mane, <clears throat> reishi, and cordyceps. These are three mushrooms that are so fantastic specifically for um, the brain, for the neurological system, for the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Um, lion's mane is incredible for the brain specifically. Cordyceps is known to be really great for creating energy in the body to help help the cells and the mitochondria create um, ATP, which is kind of like the energy building block of the body. Reishi mushrooms are known as the mushroom of immortality in Chinese herbal medicine. So this is just a really fantastic um, product for our senior dogs that goes hand in hand, works in synergy with CBD and cannabis-based medicine. Um, so absolutely check those two out. They're both available on our website. Um, let's see. I think I have been ignoring some people's comments here. Let me see who's saying things. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Hi, Maria. Um, LM Moeller. Thank you. I have a three-year-old JC who hates being groomed. What would you recommend for her to calm her so her nails can be trimmed and her coat can be brushed without her trying to bite the groomer? I would recommend, um, our calm tincture. Uh, calm is, you know, that's that's exactly what it's for. Angela, um, Angela Ardolino, she for, who formulated these products, she has a grooming and boarding business of several locations in Tampa. And that was why Calm was developed, because these groomers were getting bit. And um, something that she would offer as kind of an add-on, you know, for a couple extra bucks, we'll give you some of this hemp extract. Um, please take it. And instead of a trazodone or something that is just going to sedate these dogs, have them like flat on the, the table, they're actually still awake. They're just not as reactive and, and 
and getting us kind of swept up. So calm is really great. It's going to be something that you're going to want to experiment with the dosage. As I said, each dog is going to be different depending on their level of anxiety on the particular day. But generally, um, our all of our products are formulated so that one dropper full is going to be a standard dose that's going to be good for most dogs. And then from there, you experiment to see um, where your dog's specific sensitivity is. So we've done the work to um, to show you exactly, you know, what what the kind of benchmark is. That's one dropper full, whether that is our heel tincture, our ease tincture, or our calm tincture. Um, the mushrooms are a little different. <laughs> uh, Debbie, my dog is becoming zombie-like at times. He's on Sam E, which helps too. This is a great life. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate it. I'm enjoying myself. Um, absolutely. Check out the heel tincture. Check out Clarity. We love our dogs. I'm so happy that you guys are all here um, to learn about this. Uh, hi, Shelly. Jenny says, Clarity changed my 15-year-old dog's life. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I also take this stuff like every day. Uh, it's really good. Uh, made for dogs, but strong enough for people. Um, everything that we do is human grade. We're not recommending it for human use. However, I personally do, and I don't recommend that you do, but I do. Um, Elaine English says, one of my dogs seems to have an abrasion on top of her nose, possibly from crawling under a metal bar to retrieve a ball, anything to retrieve a ball, and is missing some of the black pigment. Can any of the CD oil tincture drops be applied directly atop? I don't own any of your salve, but have the tinctures handy. Yeah, you can absolutely um, apply the, the tincture to that area. It's going to help with inflammation. It's going to help with any kind of analgesia that that, you know, if it's itchy for them, it's going to stop being so itchy. So they're not scratching it, re-aggravating it. That's oftentimes what, what happens when hot spots just keep getting open, the scratching that stops them from allowing it to heal. Um, so you can absolutely use the, the tincture drops on something like that. The reason why we have it in salve, the, the topical, the salve form, is the way that it's um, constituted is just going to allow for it to penetrate deeper, for it to stay on that area. So the salves really are ideal. I would recommend our Soothe salve um, for that. But in lieu of that, um, I think that a quick fix is to use just the, the extract, the drops. That will be helpful. Um, how much does the dropper dose, Elaine asks. So it's going to be different for each product. A dropper full of heel is going to have 37 milligrams uh, of CBD, around 42 milligrams of total cannabinoids. Like I said, it's not just CBD we're talking about, we're talking about a full spectrum extract. So there's all these other compounds as well. Um, our Ease Tincture and our Calm Tincture, um, like the ones that you saw when I was talking about Odie here, um, that's that red one. Our Calm Tincture is the yellow bottle. So those both have nine milligrams of CBD per dropper. 12 milligrams of total cannabinoids. So it's a much smaller dose, but super effective. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the way that it's dosed. But like I said, you it, you re it really is up to each of you to figure out exactly how much your pet is gonna need. You know them best. You, you and, and it, depending on what you're targeting, just be specific about what how they used to act before this was a problem, what you ex what kind of changes you expect to see if you were to imagine them being feeling better. Like what does feeling better look like? And if you're giving them this stuff and and you know you're like, well, he's getting some relief. He seems to not have as much joint pain, but I feel like he's not back to normal or better. Experiment with the dosage. And you may find a ceiling where you're like, okay, that's as good as it gets now. And we're just going for that. But by experimenting, I think you can really kind of find the place where your pet is going to have that optimal dosage. And that is really essential. Um, if you don't want to do any of that and you just want to take my word for it and, and do what is going to help for most of the time, one dropper full. <laughs> um, it's, it's all about kind of what you have the time and the bandwidth for. Um, Maggie asks, do we ship to Canada? We do not personally ship to Canada. Um, but we have some of our retail partners that um, are linked there, cbddispensaryshop.com. Um, they will ship to Canada on our behalf. So check them out. Donna, I just started Ease. I'm using the best one for my dog. She's 11. Am I using the best one for my dog? She's 11. 
supposedly has ATL tear, ooh, and she has arthritis. Would heal be better for this? Um, honestly, in this case, I, if, if I would, I would kind of see how she's doing on it. Ease really is going to be great for these these conditions that you're talking about because of its the way that it is formulated to focus on inflammation. That's you know not only is it um, formulated with turmeric and frankincense, there are specific strains of cannabis in the ease tincture that are targeting inflammation. That is going to be super helpful for um, an ACL tear um, and and the recovery from that. So I would say that unless your dog is just especially uh, has an especially low sensitivity to CBD, that's probably going to be pretty good. You may also want to just have a bottle of heel on hand for those days where it's extra painful and you just want a really high dose. But I think that your everyday um, product would be good to be the ease. Um, just having the heel on hand though, on days where you're like, oh, she's really not, she needs a little, a little bump today. Um, that is uh, definitely something you can try. The other thing that I would recommend is if you wanted to do something a higher dose that also has that turmeric and frankincense, which are so helpful. Um, our horse um, ease is just a more potent version of dog ease, and it comes in a bigger bottle. So it's the same extracts, it's the same formulation, just more CBD in it. So it's it's about 50 milligrams per milliliter instead of nine milligrams. Hope that helps. Um, Roberta says, can you explain how to evaluate the effectiveness of the dosage on your dog? How long to see about improvement and then increasing the dosage? So this is a great question. Um, and I appreciate you asking it because it shows that, you know, you're, you're really interested in finding what's, what's best for your pet. And I think it, it is the answer that I'm going to give you. You may not, it is not like super um, easy, but it's going to depend on what the condition is. You know, the, the outcomes that we're seeking for a dog with, um, arthritis and for some early onset joint pain are going to be very different from when, what we're trying to help a dog, a senior dog with kind of significant CCD. Um, so what, what is your pet suffering from? I, I wonder, um, if it's something like inflammation from pain and joint pain, that is something that we can see effects like almost immediately. I, I mean, I told you before how it can affect the way that our pets perceive pain. So that is something that is going to happen as soon as that blood concentration goes up. The next part, by reducing inflammation, that's something that is going to also happen pretty quick. Um, that inflammation is going to get kind of melted away. So we're looking at um, m within, within an hour for their perception of it, within a couple hours, based on the inflammation of it, um, we can reduce a lot of pain. Um, and then over time, you have that kind of like, um, kind of like greater wellness and chronic inflammation that melts away. So you have a longer scale kind of relief that happens as you are consistent with it and using it regularly. Um, for conditions that are more kind of complex in nature and um, kind of longer standing neurological issues, these are things that we're going to see slower um, changes over time. Um, and so one thing that I always recommend for people is to keep a daily log, keep a journal, even if it's every couple days, there are tons of apps that you can get on your phone, um, that are, you know, like made to track, um, physical therapy or, 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 um, uh, rehabilitation for you or your pets. And you can write a log and it'll, then you can track based on where you were, how you've changed and you don't have to just keep it all in your brain that's what's really great about keeping a journal like that um so yeah keep a journal um and see how they're just kind of their behavior changes it's really all about behavioral change what's great about our dogs and also kind of the hard part is they can't just tell you yeah i'm feeling better i'm i'm i'm, I'm great mom don't worry about me because we know that's what they would say um they if they feel better they have more energy. They are, um, they're, they're playing more. Their appetite is more kind of in balance. They're, um, they're, they're sleeping better. They're more willing to go on walks. They're making more eye contact. 
So, you know, be, be your own best judge about those kinds of things. And, and depending on kind of what the nature of the condition is and what that may be um, taking away from them, how you can kind of start bringing them back to that place of balance. Um, yeah, we can never go backwards. We, sometimes we can't go back to how they were when they were puppy, but we can um, get them to the best place for where they can be at this stage in their life as senior pets. Um, so kind of wrapping up here, you know, we've talked about a lot of the different ways that, um, that CBD and hemp extract can be super helpful for our pets. And like I said, if we were to talk about all the different ways here today, we'd be here for a long time. I've already been yammering at you for an hour now. So, um, thank you so much for sticking around for listening. And, and if you have any questions, um, please do reach out. Um, and um, yeah, I um, just as a quick reminder, here's what we talked about. It's really great for generalized pain and inflammation, joint pain, spinal pain, visceral pains, so the gut, pain perception. It's great for this gut health, our center of the immune system that can work to police the body of cancer cells and respond effectively to different threats, whether they are allergies or, or things in our body that we want to modulate that um, inflammatory and allergic response, as well as it being fantastic for our senior dog's cognitive function. Things that we're not, you know, that we've mentioned, um, but didn't talk about a whole lot are cancer, you know, our dogs with cancer and tumors. It's fantastic for them, both applied topically and systemically. Our dogs with um, Cushing's disease, um, you know, it's really fantastic for our older dogs. And we have seen so many different cases of these dogs just being able to be puppy-like again and, and enjoy their lives and, and kind of function as part of the family again. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, that's going to be all for today, folks. Thanks for coming. Woohoo! See ya. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section here. Um, and uh, check out our website. Um, any gifts? Let's do a giveaway. All right. If you stuck around, we're doing a giveaway. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to choose at random. So don't worry about, um, about rushing. And it's not going to be the first one. But we're doing a giveaway. Let's do it. Why not? Um, we're going to give away a bottle of Heal. So if you can just comment hashtag healing naturally, comment hashtag healing naturally, hashtag healing naturally. We're going to choose random from everybody who um, puts in a comment and we'll send out a bottle of heal for you. Woo and then tell us about it, please. If you, if you win, um, write us a review. Tell us about how your pets are doing because that is how we um, help more pets. The, the real stories from people who are able to say, this is how it helped my dog. Um, that's how people find us and that's how we're able to help more and more animals. Um, so thank you. Woohoo. Healing naturally. Yay. Keep commenting. Um, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this, come find us the next time we do this live. Um, and, uh, good luck to everyone who has entered to win today's prize. <laughs>